G'day fiends, Andy here for GSR. The yips, let's talk about this and get to the bottom of them. What we're gonna uncover today is exactly what is it, why does it occur, and what are some of the ways that you can get over it. If you don't even know what it is, well, it's basically where something that you can do simply, normally, all of a sudden stops. You just can't do it. Some people find from like a foot or two feet away when they're putting, they just go, mm. or chipping's a big one. People just completely lose the feel to chip and they just fat it. Some people even miss it. The driving yips is a thing. People have been hitting driver good their whole life. All of a sudden they cramp up and just can't keep it on the planet. Some of the greatest players of all time experience the yips. And if you have been through it and come out of it, credit to you because it can be absolutely brutal. Some people never actually get over it. And this is actually quite close to my heart because I actually had the pitching yips once and it was honestly horrendous. When I knew a chip was coming up or it was likely that I was going to have to do a chip slash pitch, the fear would start building in even a few holes before to the point at its worst, I started getting scared about pitching and chipping literally the week before I would play that weekend. So what started as, oh, I've got a chip shot coming up became, oh no, I've got golf coming up, <laughs> which is such a bad thing. You don't want that. And you would think it'd be like, oh, just snap out of it. But it doesn't really work like that. Let's speak to an expert. He's the high performance coach for Golf New Zealand, Jay Carter. He's been through the yips terribly and he's actually helped a lot of people through it. So here's Jay. In your experience, what do you think the yips is? I think what's happening is the conscious mind is interfering with what you're trying to do. See, that's going to be a mysterious thing to people because the conscious mind, when your consciousness is considered a good thing, you don't want to be unconscious <laughs> playing golf, do you, Jay? <laughs> well, so Rich Masters has done a lot of work in the yips and the space with not only athletes but surgeons because surgeons can get the yips too. Don't think about that if you've got any surgery. Wow. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, it's not exclusive to golf. I mean, there's yips in all sorts of sports. So, And in many ways, the more knowledge we get with things, uh, the more or the higher our propensity is to therefore choke and get the yips because we have this greater knowledge. And under pressure, we then default to knowledge, uh, making us more conscious, like I said before. And that generally interferes with uh, the smooth system that we have. So... If we were learning skills implicitly, we would have more chance. And by implicit, I think you could think of things like speaking. Mm -hmm. You don't know how, you don't know what's happening with your tongue or your breath or your mouth as we are having this conversation. Mm. If I asked you, how do you say these words? You've got no idea what your tongue's doing. Mm -hmm. um, recognizing faces might be considered implicit. So all of these things um, that we consider implicit learning. So if we could learn golf implicitly, would have less chance of choking. Unfortunately, but, we tend to learn golf explicitly. So how would you implicitly improve someone's pitching and help them get over the yips? It's not going to be easy, right? So the first bit would be you could do things like errorless learning where um, the person just, the task is so simple that they can uh, literally be errorless. So if you are talking about putting, putting into, you know, those holes that are, big 10 inches mm -hmm. wide putt into those from a foot and then just slowly um, bring that back to what is normal the more external we can make our focus of attention the less likely we are to choke so if i was playing golf with you andy and you've just highlighted that you had the pitching yips when you stood over a pitch because i'm quite competitive and a bit of a dick and i want to beat you i would be asking you questions like have you changed your grip recently, mate? Or do you always grip that strong? <laughs> yeah. To direct your attention to your hands, which is an internal focus of attention. And again, with internal focus of attention, you are less likely to perform. And I guess that's what we see with coaching in many ways or teaching is this transfer of knowledge. And people will go on YouTube and Instagram and go to their guru and find out all the technical stuff they need to know but it's not likely to help them perform the skill any better. In fact, in many ways, it could be a massive inhibitor to performance. But if I was caddying for you and you were over a pitch, then I might speak in analogies and say, uh, just land the plane, or I might give you an external focus of attention being the peak height of your chip shot. Like how would, you know, what would you do to hit the ball over that, uh, up as high as that cloud or something. So Internal focus of attention more likely to um, not perform so well and external focus a lot higher.
So your, your attention's too much on you, not mm. too enough on just the action. Well, what, so where should you place your attention if you're approaching something that feels yippy? Um, well, I mean, mate, there's, there's heaps of things. So it, the more external you can place your attention, the better. There's a great book by Mark Guadagnoli. I think that's how you say his surname, but it's called Practice to Learn, Play to Win. And he has this thing where it's skill equals ability minus interference. And I just think about that and go, mm. if you can chip in practice, you've got the ability. If you can't chip on the on the course, then there's interference and we need to attack the interference. If you can't chip in practice or on the course, then it's an ability issue. <laughs> and so in that, in that case, okay. <laughs> you know, in that case, we might have some technical intervention required. You may be doing something fundamentally wrong, but I think a lot of people can, um, you know, resonate with the fact that they can do it in training, but they can't do yes. it in performance. So that's an interference issue. So how we would attack that might be different. How does the technical element yeah. play a role in this? I think the danger mate is in siloing this and going, it's a technical problem or it's a mental problem. I think it's all interconnected. Like you mm. can't separate one without the other. So, th you know, there could you could have some things that technically make it harder to achieve the task. But equally, you can have, um, there's footage of all sorts of players with funky technique who can still get the job done. Mm. Um, again, there's there's examples of people with wonderful technique, like Brett Rumford, say. We can watch his technique and go, yeah, that's sick, and we can understand why he does it and how he does it. But we don't know that's what makes him good at chipping. It could be his imagination or his ability to understand what shot to hit in the moment. Most practice greens that we chip around are dead flat, we have a few goes at it with a you know, heap of different... We have 20 balls in a pile and we just keep hitting. Mm. So the whole process of understanding how to execute with one chance is half the skill, not having 20 balls and getting 16 of them up and down or you know, like mm. 16 good chip shots. That's not the skill. The skill is understanding how I can do it in one moment. Oh, wow. So it's a reframing of what the skill actually is. That's, that's cool. Yeah, did the yips come on for you suddenly, mate? Yes. In an event, I played the practice round. Pure. One under, two under. Everyone's like, you feel like playing with like, you're a chance. You're looking real good. 36 hole stroke play first day. And I just remember all of a sudden, I just hit it next to the green. All of a sudden, I was like, oh, that's a bit yippy, a bit bony. It felt a bit quick and stiff. I'm like, ooh, what's happened there? And then I had a similar shot later on. I'm like, oh, oh. And then all of a sudden, collapsed. I had nothing to lean into. I just didn't know where I was. And then I ended up shooting like, I don't know, from feeling like I had a chance to win the whole thing and then 75 and like 83 and I was just completely demoralized. So my question for you, Andy, is in the practice round, you said everything was great. You were looking good. Your mates were talking you up. And then in the first round, something happened. Chipping was all of a sudden gone. There was no technical intervention between the practice round and the first round. But then earlier you told me that it was a technique based problem. What your technique didn't change. My theory would be that I didn't really have, let's call it a reliable technique, um, but I was getting away with it because I was having fun and I was having a play. All of a sudden I was playing an event and there was, it, it was less about the fun and the expression of the shot and it became more about, okay, we need to hit this close because I've made a couple of cheeky bogeys. All of a sudden the technique couldn't withstand pressure because there wasn't enough knowledge, okay. wasn't enough knowledge there. And then so I couldn't remain playful. And because there wasn't enough knowledge to help when things fell apart, I just fell apart. So I'm just there okay. with, with no understanding of how bad, with no understanding where to go. I was just there. I mm. felt like it was just mystery. And I had, it was like I just lost language. <laughs> you know, yeah, nice. It was game That's over. a good description. Yeah. And then, yeah. Um, so I couldn't find that playfulness. So how I managed to find that was consulting someone about technique just to see wh wh where was I off and there's a couple of key areas like dude that's a disaster so then I was like mm. okay let's play around with this new feel and eventually I found the play again so for me it yeah. was yes there's clearly a mental element to this being too focused on the result mm. of course but for me it was I was able to unlock the the freedom by acquiring more knowledge and improving my technique and then understanding the implications of that 
Yes. Um, you don't love that. You I'm, don't love that. I don't like it. I don't <laughs> even like it. Um, my counterpunch would be, as a young golfer or an athlete, what you desperately want is someone to give you the silver bullet. And so when somebody says, mate, your technique is this, I can fix you because I have all the answers, ta-da, you're f happy as Larry. Yes. But the reality is I call bullshit on that. That's not what happened. What happened was you probably trained in such a way that you had a really narrow bandwidth of skill because you were trying to execute the same technique every time. My challenge would be increase your bandwidth of skill and what you can do and how you can achieve that shot. And then it really doesn't matter what your technique is because you can execute whether you're standing on one foot, two foot, wide stance, narrow stance, mm. sharp lean, no lean, because you're learning to adapt. You know, like you've got this, you want this robust technique. The problem with a robust technique is as soon as it breaks, it shatters. If, if someone's clicked on this video in whatever way we decide to edit this, they're clearly mm. wanting to learn about this because it's affecting them or they want to, you know, work out what happened to them all those years ago. What yeah. would you say they need to do immediately if they're just like, I, go, I don't know what to do? I'd encourage people to go and just explore different ways, just explore different shot options, explore different movements, try and get away from this. Um, it has to be this or, you know, the best players in the world do this. Therefore, you don't know what the best players in the world are thinking or uh, what their learned experiences have been. Mm. God, I like that. And I found massively as well, once I I really realized, once I noticed that I was no longer scared of the shot, which was an amazing achievement. Like I, I always wanted people mm. just to like clap. I was like, clap for me. You don't know how important <laughs> that chip was just now. Um, I found like, then I became much more okay with hitting the occasional like, oh, I've just caught that a bit fat. Because of that, mm. oh, it's, it's, it's hard. This is a hard skill. So because there's yes. a certain, there's a perfectionism that was folded in like everything's got to go bop, bop, check, or everything's, you know. Uh, yeah. So my chipping actually became uglier, but better. The challenge is, mate, if you're struggling or your mate's struggling, you just you want to jump in and give them a hand. And, mm. you know, like if I was playing with you and you had the yips, I'd go, oh, Andy, I try this or do this or this worked for me. And so then I've just given you three bits of information and then someone else gives you some more and you're desperate to find that hook. So you're listening and... And then it's just that layer and layer of the conscious stuff that I said at the start is actually inhibiting you. So it's all the most, um, everyone's got good intentions, but maybe not necessarily the best for someone trying to get uh, through the yips. So get away from self-conscious thought, get thought away from here, get it out there and play around. Yeah. That's Boom. it. Then technical in any way, should people consider technique? Oh well, yeah, there is an element of it, mate, but you need to understand why and not think about it exclusively on its own it comes with everything else um it's not going to be the silver bullet and i think your case to a point mate like you were flushing they were pure the day before and then nothing happened overnight yep just deep trauma the next day deep, deep yeah. trauma <laughs> okay cool all right mate thank you very much all right. Two, 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 mate. Two.